Hi, and welcome to the Data Strategy Gurus podcast. We're once again live from the Click World event in Las Vegas, and we're joined by Kevin Hennigan, Chief Learning Officer at uh, ClickView. Quite a title, uh, Kevin. Uh, maybe you can explain a bit what your role is at Click and uh, what you do with customers and the academic world. Yeah, absolutely happy to. Um, it's, it's a unique role here. We get to interact with all different groups, right? Customers, partners, prospects. Um, and what we try to do is we, we educate them, obviously, yeah. on our products. We educate them about the industry, like data literacy, data management, data security. Um, and we deliver that to our employees, to our customers. But then we also go down into university programs and we try to teach them these skill sets early on before they go out into their careers because it's important that they don't just have the technology, but they have the, the critical thinking skills and the problem solving skills to work with data appropriately to make the best decisions. Yeah, and that's something, a kind of skill, what you see is still missing in uh, educational programs or? I think so. I think we, we, technologies evolve quickly. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've caught up with the fact that we're teaching a lot of new tools and technology, but we're not really teaching how to use them. And what I mean by that is like as kids, we always ask why, right? Why? Yeah. And, and like it drives us crazy as parents, but then you go to university and you ask your teacher why, and they're like, don't talk back to me, I'm the teacher. And then you go to your first job and you ask why, and the manager is like, because I'm the manager, right? Because I, we kind of lose that critical thinking skill. And now there's so much data, there's so much complexity, there's so much velocity, it's easy to misinterpret it. Yeah. And if we don't apply the critical thinking, the getting diverse perspectives, we're going to see an insight. It's going to look like it makes sense. We're going to act on it. But in reality, it wasn't the right insight in the first place because we didn't apply the critical thinking. Yeah, I, I just what you say, the critical thinking recently in a discussion around, of course, chat GPT, yeah. where they said, before you, you were wise and knowledgeable if you had all the book knowledge in your head yep. and that you could apply it or not, that doesn't really matter at that time. And now that you see all the information is available at a finger snap like that. So the critical thinking is really becoming important that you know which kind of questions to ask, how to ask that uh, as such. Exactly. And not just which questions to ask, but then when you see an insight, how could that insight be misleading? How could it be misinterpreted? How could the trend actually be accurate, but still misleading to the point that it changes your insight? Yeah. And, and how do you bring that into an educational program? Are you collaborating with customers to bring uh, where we say either industry knowledge or that contextualization where you can say the insight is correct or not, that you can have that kind of business analyst type of of way of working. Absolutely. I mean, there's two real main types. Like you, you have the data, but then as you mentioned, you have to have the industry knowledge. But even if you have the industry knowledge, the fundamentals of what we call data literacy is, is making sure that you understand correlation doesn't equal causation. Understanding that, hey, if there's an outlier, don't give a mean, give a median. Like basic fundamentals of data really go a long way in making sure you don't misinterpret things. Yeah, and I see a lot of people, if they say data science or, or data, they think about math and they kind of, oh, math, I was not good at school. So they kind of have a, a nuance of, 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 of closing up and, and doing something with data or technology because it's, it's not that kind of thing. I, and it, it's not just, you're right, it, it started out with data science. Now, just anytime someone hears the term data, a lot of times they're like, oh, time out, not me, right? <laughs> um, but it's everywhere. It, it's, and it's not technical it's more to me it's more soft skills right challenging assumptions mitigating cognitive bias asking the right question critical thinking getting diverse perspectives they're all soft skills but yeah. they're so important for data literacy yeah so that means that that we're kind of missing all of these uh, soft skills i mean i'm working as a as a freelance consultant as well so therefore for me it's easy you come in and kind of on two weeks you get what is happening in within mm -hmm. the company uh, not in, in in depth, but you you know there is marketing, you know there is finance, and you try to combine that, and you know which kind of things what you're looking for. But apparently, it's 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 not so obvious for a lot of people to to have that type of skill of of understanding where you are and and what you're looking for. Well, it's, sir, you're talking about like systems thinking, right? Is understanding the parts of a whole. Our brains aren't wired to think systemically; they think very linearly. And then yeah. we talked about technologies evolving exponentially but our brain's still linear. So there's that clear gap where you need to go faster, you need to go sideways, but we just don't have the either the skill set or the aptitude sometimes to do it. And do you think now with, with technology, we, we're having that discussion again, 
open uh, large language models that that will help us in in having that more holistic view in a faster way than where you say okay we're wired to uh, just linear thinking and that's that's well uh, restriction and constraint to go faster so we yeah, think these, these models will help it, us in, in that way help and hurt it'll help because if it does what it does best is processing power it can process faster than us but if we rely on it for the human element so like the old urban myth was someone drives off the cliff and they're like well the gps told me to that's not common sense. So if chat GPT or yeah. machine learning tells me not to give someone a loan or to not refinance, do I challenge it? Maybe not because they say, well, the technology is right, but you should challenge it because it's not always right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the ethical part where we come again uh, still on our side and that's that's something we, we need to uh, be in exactly. keep on. It's a good partnership if you do them together. But a lot of times, unfortunately, we focus on the technology and we forget about the the, the human element of it. Yeah, and then I, when I think in, in perspective of, of Click, uh, do you embed that in kind of solutions that you provide? Not only the technology, uh, technology is just technology, as we mm -hmm. say, but you, you have the program uh, which goes to universities and you give that data literacy course, uh, courses or, yep. or how does that work? Yeah, so at the universities, you get the free software, but you get the data literacy curriculum, which actually teaches you how to do critical thinking with data. How do you challenge assumptions? How do you avoid confirmation bias? Something that everyone, you know, every time I talk about it, there's a good portion of people like, nope, I don't have bias. Um, you know, it's magic. No, 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 everyone has bias and they need to get over it. Um, but we're doing that more in corporate settings too now with Click customers is they, oh, yeah. they understand the technology and like I want to democratize data. I want to come up with more insights. But time and time again, what's getting in our way is we have an incorrect assumption. We have an outdated mental model. We have um, someone that doesn't understand correlation doesn't equal causation. Yeah. And so the curriculum teaches the product, but it also teaches these skills of how do you actually apply them. So you have a scenario, you get the data, and instead of like saying, here's my insight, the first thing we say is, okay, how could that insight be incorrect? How could it be misleading? What other questions do you need to know? What other alternatives could come up with this? And once they start doing that, then it becomes a habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was uh, indeed trying to to understand where you say we we work with the customers, we work with the people, and give them that the type of uh, system thinking. It's how do you get them on board and get excited? I mean, a lot of companies say we want data driven data as an asset. So I'm kind of getting annoyed by the terms being used by companies. If you enter, they don't give the commitment uh, to really go full force mm -hmm. into that. So I think when you have this type of workshops or enablements. Uh, do you see that happening at customers that they get excited? We do if we do it right. Like you can't just go into a customer and an executive and just do a theoretical session and say, here's the other, so it's going to help you. You can't just show facts and figures like 20% are higher productive and more. You have to show them, almost put them into the situation where they make a less than ideal decision. Then they're like, yeah. oh my God, why did that happen? Oh, because you have bias. Oh, because you didn't challenge. And then their eyes are like, oh my God. I'm rethinking everything now. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't put them in that situation, a lot of times it's just human nature where like, all right, it's a buzzword. I'm good. I don't need it. Yeah, it's still the seeing is believing. Exactly. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, I was quite of triggered on, on a project where I was, was using ClickView and we were surprised that we were inviting people to join the session to explain what is possible. And based upon the data, we, we left aside the technology approach and mm -hmm. were kind of Hey, the simple solutions, what you have in, in the associations with uh, music and titles and authors, yep. and, and which is a good example. And, and people can resonate to what they see. It's not, uh, t uh, well, t tailored to their industry, but it's something they understand and you keep away. And we were kind of surprised that we had about 30 people in a workshop. We had to split it up because so many people say, we really want to use the tool as such. Yeah. And, and, and that's great enablement. Uh, and, and especially with technology, most of the tools, it takes about two, three days before you can pull your data together and give the insights and, and do the discussion. Oh, this, this is what you meant. Okay, let me add a field. Let me add a relationship. Is it? Oh, yeah, this is it. Exactly. And, and that goes fast and, and in the enablement. Exactly. It's an iterative process, like you said. And to your point, a lot of times we don't want to start with the customer data because they're too familiar with it. And a lot of times you can't set up those situations because they're too familiar with the data. Uh, you, we do something like you said with the music that they're familiar with, but it's not exactly their domain. Then we pivot to their domain. So now you found this, now let's go to yours. What's hidden underneath there that's, that is invisible, like the art of possible. What, yeah. what questions are you not asking? 
Yeah. And and does that give some return in such a way where you better understand how customers are using the tool and the data and can embed that in the features for the product as such? It does, absolutely, because one of the things we've added recently is the Insight Advisor where you can add natural language questions like, can I do this? Can I do that? What are my numbers here? And what what it returns is it helps you be more data literate. It knows your data is nominal. You want to do a comparison. I'm going to do a bar chart, and it builds a bar chart for you. Okay. So it takes that thinking of, okay, I don't understand nominal versus ordinal versus interval. I don't understand the chart types. But what it lets them do is focus their brain power on interpreting it. Yeah. yeah. So what would be for you a good advice to people that, that want to get more data acumen and, and really get the insights from their data, but are not technical, are not business analysts, but know the business as yeah. such. I would say step one, get over the phobia of data, right? It, it's here to stay. It's not technical. Think yeah. about everything you do every day is with data. Um, to me, it really is going back to the soft skills. Get diverse perspectives, challenge your assumptions, understand the brain has biases, yeah. um, and think about reflect. I'm, I'm big on reflecting at the end of the day. Think about how many decisions you made in a given day with data and think about what made you make that decision. And, yeah. and just like postpartum, go back and say, okay, what would I have done differently? And then they'll start realizing it's not that hard. It's not that dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's not that scary. Um, and hopefully they get excited and want to do more and more. Because again, you're not learning statistics. You're learning soft skills, which you can apply everywhere. Yeah. Not just data literacy. So they're not understanding that it's only, well, only soft skills and, and not the technology. Exactly. Not the data and not statistics. Yeah. Okay. Great one. The last question, Kevin. Uh, data connects us all. But music connects us all as well. So mm -hmm. what is your favorite kind of music or favorite band? So uh, I'm from Boston. I love Aerosmith. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, being a little bit cheesy, it depends in the mood. So if I'm working out, I want something with a high beats per minute. So it's yeah. probably some pop boy band that just you know gets the beats per minute. But if I just want to chill out, it's classic rock. It's Aerosmith. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Kevin. Thanks very much for your time and thanks for the discussion. Absolutely appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.